Welcome to Sand City Sports. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King, and we are back again to bring you all the sports and current events news stories that you need to know. Folks, I want to wish you a happy Veterans Day, and it being Veterans Day, we have to give a very special shout out to Dave DeWeese here at the Cape Cod Media Center for helping us to get this episode up and rolling, so very appreciative of that, and equally uh, we are all, of course, very appreciative of our veterans who uh, stand uh, guard. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm reminded of, of West Point. You know, they call West Point the, the, the long gray line. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to sit on these shows and talk the talk. But as we all know, it's our veterans that are out there in the real world uh, walking the walk uh, so that we can have a very privileged lifestyle that, uh, that, that we have. So thank you. That being said, of course, uh, it, it being a, a football Monday and, and a sports Monday, plenty to get to, uh, and, and we will start in the NFL with the Sunday night game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, plenty of eyes there. Crucial NFC matchup uh, that included all the fixings, and of course, the, the Vikings came out on top 28 to 24. But I want to I wanna push back. Cowboys, America's team. Uh, fan base that is, uh, that is, what's the adjective that I'm looking for? Uh, rabbit is what I wanted to say, but Cowboys fa fans are notable uh, for, for their enthusiasm. But there's a lot of talk today about getting rid of Jason Garrett, uh, about who's to blame for this loss. Folks, listen, this was an outstanding game. Two good teams. You know, and look, we, we, we play these ball games. Some, somebody has to lose. And so first and foremost, I think the hand-wringing Monday morning quarterbacking, a lot of the agitation, aggravation directed at Jason Garrett. Now, look, uh, there was that uh, Cowboys were in the red zone. Garrett decided to run the ball twice, then, you know, pass it to Ezekiel Elliott on a screen. Uh, that would have, if they would have scored a touchdown on that drive, it would obviously put the Cowboys ahead. And so I can understand the outcry in relation to that. But you know, as I'm watching this game. Kirk Cousins is out there getting the job done, making plays. Dak Prescott getting the job done again, uh, making plays, showing that he's deserving you know, of that $30 million contract he had an outstanding game. And it just came down to you know, the Vikings you know, were just that much better. Now, look, uh, clearly not a football guy. And so th these takes, honestly, not outstanding. Now, I'll be the first to say, they, they, they don't have a great background in the sport. And, you know, if we were to look at this game from an analytic, analytical standpoint, you know, or, or if you had, you know, football people, you know, and listening to the conversations, you know, I'm certainly missing a lot. All that I am trying to uh, get across, you know, in, in this introductory story is, look, just make sure I'm you know, doing all right here. Your quick, uh, you know, quick checkup. Uh, I'm running behind. Running behind today, running behind uh, per usual. And again, I, I, I got to thank the people here at the Cape Cod Media Center because this production in, in no way, shape, or form would, would have gotten off the ground or you know, just because of that. All right, point taken. All I want to say is this. Look, Cowboys' schedule is much more difficult than the Eagles. They are now not the favorites, frankly, to win the NFC East. Yet, they balled. You know, that was a, a great game. You know, it, it wasn't a one-sided performance. You know, and, and, and the Vikings, you know, they, they just happened, you know, to cross the finish line first. But, you know, I was impressed with the Cowboys. First and foremost, Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper balled out. We need to see a little bit more from Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, but, you know, even though, you know, they are, you know, kind of, uh, you know, not an inside lane, you know, use a NASCAR reference, you know, they could still uh, go ahead and get that, NFC East Championship, make the playoffs, you know, get into the second season, you know, and make a tremendous amount of noise. So hats off to both the Vikings and the Cowboys. We have an outstanding game uh, kicking off right now. Uh, we will get uh, that information, you know, in the E&E, &E, the editing and effects, as this show goes out between the Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, two, again, heavyweights in the NFC. And, and we're going to see, uh, you know, again, heavyweights to crown. Uh, San Francisco undefeated, uh, the Seahawks having 
uh, MVP favorite, MVP candidate, Russell Wilson, to, uh, you know, you have the veteran coaching with the Seahawks and Pete Carroll and what he's done over the years. Kyle Shanahan, frankly, new on the scene. A lot of question marks surrounding his name, and he has really gotten rid of the majority of those and, and stood tall and, and served notice that he belongs in the NFL coaching fraternity in, in, in quite a big way, you know, with that team being undefeated and in the conversation, you know, for the Super Bowl and possibly a championship. And so, once again, we will have that information uh, in this uh, show, but as the game is going on right now, we, we can't say anything uh, for certain, clearly. Anything else that we need to really touch on? Either the Patriots didn't play, uh, so that's a, a narrative and a storyline. It's a little bit on ice. Uh, yes, there is there is some, some more to talk about, and, and, and you know you know where I'm going. Well, the, the, the next story that, that, that must be addressed in the NFL, I, I did not forget. You know, when Superman, when Superman uh, uh, goes flying across the sky, how can you, how can you, that, that escaped your memory. Okay, and of course, I'm talking about Lamar Jackson, the perfect QBR for the second time, two times in one season. I do not care if these two perfect QBR performances and all-world, you know, historic outings for this man occurred against two abysmal franchises. Yesterday, Cincinnati Bengals' first game of the year against the Miami, Miami Dolphins. That is secondary, all right? His, uh, I can't say performance again, uh, you know, it, I've already said stand tall. I'm at a loss for words because, listen, the narrative surrounding Lamar Jackson now and the narrative surrounding Lamar Jackson at the end of last year, throughout the summer and going into this year, night and day, all right? We, I, everyone needs to remember that. All of this praise, adulation, MVP this, uh, Heisman Trophy that. Very few people, if anyone, outside of Lamar Jackson and his inner circle, felt that way for the last however many months. 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever the case may be. Okay? So we have to remember that. Now, when you're wrong, you're wrong. When you're right, you're right. What he's doing, uh, you know, he deserves to be in the MVP conversation and a number of apologies from people like myself who doubted him. Facts. Along with that, John Harbaugh, that coaching staff, that organization, you can see when you have a talented individual, um, you know, who nonetheless has... Uh, things to work on, things to improve upon, but is willing to work, to do what it takes to be successful. When you put those two things together, never mind being competitive, making your fan base proud, representing yourself in a positive uh, and encouraging fashion, but uh, the, the artistry, the, the stunning display of creativity, athleticism, innovation, and on and on and on. That's possible and, and that we saw yesterday. Uh, you know, you know, you put two and two together. Lamar Jackson, Down the catch uh, or it's pass completion. Here's right. Lamar on a run. Himself. Look at him turn back and forth. Oh, he broke his ankles. Now he's got an entourage and he's got a touchdown. He is Houdini. We want to play. 47-yard touchdown run by the magical quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Wow! Well, just watch this. Go ahead and freeze it. J just watch Carlos Dunlap right there. His eyes are right here, and he never feels. And once he does, he's just not quick enough or fast enough to chase down Lamar Jackson. And we talk about a tough tackle in the open field. Look at that spin move. Nick Vigil's right there. He leads the team in tackles, and he's got no clue as to how to get Lamar Jackson on the ground. Uh, and, and who knows, you know, what the results could be. And I think that's uh, the Baltimore Ravens story uh, in, in large part, in, in, in large regard. Because, again, you got a six-round pick, University of Michigan. Uh, maybe he'll be a backup. Probably not going to be in the NFL after five years. This kid, Tom Brady, you know, we're, we're, we're very unsure. You know, we already have a $100 million quarterback. This guy, Drew Brees, number one overall pick. And so, you know, maybe you can collect a couple years.
his salary in the NFL, set himself up, but, but we don't see a bright future for him going forward. 20 years later, six Super Bowl victories, nine Super Bowl appearances, uh, and you see what somebody who's not necessarily the most talented, uh, but, but has talent and is willing to trust the process, shout out to, to Brett Brown, is willing to, to do his job. I think that's a more appropriate uh, reference, you know, with, with Mr. Bill Belichick. Credit, uh, once again, and again and again, uh, Lamar Jackson's, the Ravens, they, they are very much in uh, the, the uh, Super Bowl and, and championship conversation. Didn't have a game here in Titletown. Uh, and, okay, so that, so those are storylines and narratives. Uh, we got a couple things I need to get through, so I don't want to, you know, sometimes I go on and on, it takes a little while to get going, I forget that, you know, being behind, you know, I can't be here, you know, I can only be here for a certain amount of time. But New England Patriots, their next couple games, they're going on the road to Philly. Uh, that could be another L. They got the Cowboys in Foxborough. Great game, two proud fan tr- franchises. That could also be another L because the Cowboys are going to be in full-blown desperation mode. That game means much more to the Patriots, excuse me, to the Cowboys than it will mean to the Patriots. They got to go on the road uh, to see Deshaun Watson, excuse me, Deshaun Watson in Houston. Very tough game. And then Patty Mahomes is coming to Foxborough. Very exciting uh, time for just right here in New England. These are going to be outstanding games. And the NFL, you know, the eyes of the NFL will be dead center uh, on the Patriots. And, and we are going to see. Uh, started off the schedule very weak. Now you're, you're going right into the thick of things. And so in conclusion, uh, another great game we're going to reference here in terms of what the Tennessee Titans did against the Kansas City Chiefs yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm out of control today. I'm kicking things. What's going on? Alright, uh, apologies, folks. Nonetheless, the fact of the matter is the Titans uh, showed themselves and, and represented themselves well. The Kansas City Chiefs, they're in big trouble. Defense is atrocious, abysmal, egregious, and on and on and on. That is not a team that I see making the AFC Championship game if, if things don't change. Period. End of story. I don't care how great they are. So, back to the Patriots. If they don't uh, put things in order, which they're more than capable of doing, they can find themselves in the very same situation that those Kansas City Chiefs are in. Point of fact, Chiefs are 5 4. That's right. They're 5 4. Patriots, I know. 7 1, you know what? They, they, they could end up close to 500 uh, with this upcoming schedule. All right. Starting to get into a groove here. And uh, rightfully so, you know, the, the time is, is up the essence. Got a couple things that are really uh, getting that I, I'm glad I have the chance to talk about. We talked about some pro stuff, great. We need to talk about what's going on in college sports because I'm frankly furious, enraged, uh, losing it in terms of what transpired going into last weekend, the cowardice that I saw the NCAA in terms of how they've handled these two situations, and of course I'm talking about Chase Young, Heisman Trophy candidate at Ohio State, defensive end, somebody who will be going certainly in the top three, if not number one overall next year's NFL draft, and James Wiseman, Memphis uh, Tigers uh, on the basketball side, somebody who I believe will be the number one overall pick in next year's NBA draft, and this eligibility, these Two, eligibility crisis that have, again, because of how the NCAA handled it, uh, you know, it, it, and because it's the Football Monday, the storyline has been, frankly, pushed uh, aside, brushed back for the time being, and, and that again goes to, uh, I already used the word carries. I, I can't think of another, you know, maybe it'll come to me. It, 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 it's just weak, you know, and underhanded. I won't even say shrewd because that has positive connotations. There's nothing positive about how the NCAA has handled these situations, particularly James Wiseman, and releasing this story on Friday, uh, late Friday afternoon, going into Friday evening, so it really couldn't be picked up. You know, that, that's the time when you, when you when you don't when you want to get some news out there, but you don't want to have any analysis, etc. 
examination, uh, you know, and, and building on the stories, that, that's when you just kind of dump stories. That's what the NCAA did, uh, in large part because they know they don't have the legs to stand up. All right. Folks, uh, it's been discussed. The, the, the hypocrisy, it is the word. College sports, this is a multi-billion dollar. This, it, it, you know, guys, this is like the equivalent. College sports, they're really the equivalent of a casino. Just talking, you know, buddies of mine got a chance to go to Encore in Boston. Uh, outstanding casino facility, so on and forth. Didn't realize it's right there. Uh, in the heart of Boston, you know, I was there, you know, shout out to my uh, good friend, uh, Derek Thompson, allowed me to go to a UFC event in Boston, which was outstanding, uh, so a couple uh, dear friends, you know, we got together, you know, some of the guys, and then, you know, afterwards, you know, let's go, check, I had never been there, check it out, I, I was taken aback, you know, you cross the Dakin Bridge, you know, or, you know, you go to Team Guard, you know, right before you cross the Dakin Bridge, you know, uh, you know, right, on course, right there. You know, right? You know, so if you need to get there, one, two, three, uh, and, you know, outstanding, so on and forth. Where am I going with this particular thing? Does this have to do with college football? Here's what I'm going with College sports is the equivalent of a casino that pays no taxes. That just keeps all the money. That's what college football, that's what college sports is. Facts. All right? We, we've been debating about having a casino in Massachusetts for, clo- you know, since I got back, you know, in the early 2000s from college. 0405. Wampanoag Tribe here on the Cape, you know, uh, you know, at that point in time was, was the front runner, you know, Steve Wynn, you know, in Las Vegas, uh, casino owner, uh, innovator, so on and forth, ended up getting uh, it done some years later, again, this is almost, it was almost 2020, so at least 15 years, you know, and I'm sure this conversation was going on, so 20 plus years we've been talking about, casino in Massachusetts, okay, finally got it done, you know, tip my hat to people in Everett, you know, and, and they're doing a great job, wonderful. Again, back to college sports. Now imagine if, if this casino encore paid no taxes. And the taxpayers were the ones that had to build the whole facility. Which sometimes takes place, you know, in pro sports, you know, and shout out to the Golden State Warriors and, and the, new, the new Chase Center, you know, that they, they didn't do that. You know, the business uh, interest to have plenty of money and will make plenty of money, you know, off the facility. That's how they built it. College sports, that, that, that's what it is. Just taking, taking, take, period. And they really keep it all. The, the overall majority. Chase Young, you're talking about an $11,000 loan. $11,000. Again, billions of dollars coming in in terms of college sports writ large. And then for his university, and, and, and I've made this comparison, you know, I, I go back to Cam Newton. And the, uh, frankly, uh, witch trial, witch hunt that he was subjected to, you know, when he won the Heisman and led Auburn to a national uh, championship, you know, and that cloud hung over that entire season and completely marred the the entire experience. We're talking about $180,000. I will confidently state that the national championship that won Cam Newton delivered for Auburn, who hasn't been heard from since he left who was down 21-0 in Tuscaloosa against Alabama, brought them all the way back. A nip-and-tuck game against Oregon in the national championship game, which he led them to victory in. Okay, that national championship will and has and will continue to provide at least $100 million. I stand firmly by that number for Auburn University in terms of the television contract that they were able to within the SEC to mint based on having a national champion in your conference. The, mem- the memorabilia, okay? The television, you know, all of the royalties that go along with that national championship, which was dependent on Cam Newton. And I'm supposed to care about $180,000 when you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars based on his labor power? The only crimes that take place in college athletics are the severely, I mean, it's not even, uh, we're not even going to use historic references, you know, in terms of, uh, the the, the term slavery will not be uh, applied here as far as I'm concerned, okay, because it, it just, no, 
and when we talk about the, the, the distinctions between generations coming from a history background. No, I know. We live in the most uh, technologically, we, you know, Americans and our country, we still have plenty to work on. This is the richest nation in the history of the world. Okay, Rome, for all of its power and splendor and might, okay, in the ancient world, having running water in the ancient world, which they didn't have in medieval Europe, which is a large reason why the bubonic plague began and spread. Let me get me started. Okay, uh, our, you know, this modern day Roman Empire the, and, and the amount of creature comforts that we enjoy, uh, it, it's just unimaginable in the scope of history. So no, there's gonna be no references to slavery, you know, when we, when we talk about college athletics. Nonetheless, in terms of economic crimes, felonies, uh, you know, just criminal behavior and activity, I can't think, it, 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 you know, these scholarships, you know, it, it, if somebody was a, it, it just doesn't amount, you know, what would the scholarship be if, it, if it's a state school, a lot of these are state schools, I've said this, and I know I'm going on this subject, but I don't really care, okay, because look, the president of Clemson University, which is a state school in the beautiful uh, land of South Carolina, makes just over $900,000 a year to be the president of a university that does tremendous good in that state and in the region more generally. $900,000, almost a million dollars. That's a good salary. Davo Sweeney, the football coach, makes $9.3 million a year. Ten times plus what the president of the university owns. And you want to talk to me about amateurism and about student athletes? Look, uh, NCAA, which you need to do concerning Chase Young, again, Heisman Trophy candidate, bringing in tens of millions of dollars to his university, okay, and to the overall enterprise in general. James Wiseman, same thing on the basketball side. These are two number one overall picks. Okay, you're not going to apologize. Fine. You should apologize, but you're not gonna apologize. Fine. We need to end this charade. You know, the, the, the level of, you know, this is worse, or almost worse. I don't even know if that's a good state. That's not a good state. That's not a good state. This is almost as bad as prohibition. And the amount of resources just absolutely wasted. You know, you have the NCAA devoting time and energy looking for, you know, thousand dollars here or ten thousand dollars you know the, the, the numbers in both of these cases they don't even rise above twenty thousand dollars these loans james wiseman to help his family move uh chase young you know received a loan and paid it back and, and, and we're talking about a billion dollar industry okay shame on you. shame okay game of thrones level shame on the ncw over to uh, the world of hoops, which I, I do know a little bit about. Not a great amount, but, but you know, stated. Uh, and before I, you know, we go to the NBA, shout out to Drew Pops, okay, commentator on this show. He's at the Celtics game tonight. The Mavs are in town. Great matchup. Two up-and-coming teams, Luka Doncic, Crispy P, uh, in the building. You know, Boston at the top of the East, balling. Blue collar, hard hat, team first mentality. We, we've been excited about it. it. It's coming to fruition. And so, great matchup. Uh, we're looking for Gordon Hayward to get back healthy. Uh, you know, just the luck. I mean, unfortunately, this was, one of, this was not a catastrophic injury, you know, as he has suffered before. You know, but, you know, uh, backside screen, you know, and, uh, you know, he fractured, you know, uh, his hand. To a certain extent, had surgery today, and so I'm hopeful that he will be back by uh, New Year's. You know, it, it wasn't, you know, for, you know, one of these, you know, where you're falling or so on and forth, you know, or a high speed, you know, it, it was just he was, you know, he, he turned, you know, and he, these, these screens, it wasn't even anybody's fault, you know, he's, uh, but, uh, you know, his hand kind of got caught, you know, Marcus Aldridge, you know, so he's like running these screens, he's, you know, backside screens like a stone wall. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful that we'll be back uh, by New Year's. You know, it, it, it is unfortunate because Celtics were absolutely positively cooking. You know, but we, we have the score.
born kid. I don't want to say we. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not like Drew Potts. I'm not a lifelong Celtics fan. You know, I, I follow. You know, I was a Bulls fan under the leadership of Tom Thibodeau. That was, you know, and they got rid of a good man, and then Minnesota got rid of a good man. You know, and so now I, I tend to pull for the, the Kings. You know, De'Aaron Fox, Marvin Bagley, guys are on my fantasy team. And so I'm not gonna act like I'm, you know, one of these, you know, diehard Green Teamers. But I've been pulling for this team. You know, and, and, and was advocating for them to get rid of. Uh, you know, Mr. Irving and, and send him along, you know, because he was not uh, leading the way he should have been. And so, uh, pumped. And I think they're going to be able to maintain. Uh, they have the scoring, obviously, with Kemba Jalen and, and Tatum, you know, and, and Cantor can score. And I think this is an opportunity for the young guys. Uh, Grant Williams, Edwards, uh, Langford, hopefully he gets, you know, able to get back. You know, I think they can, you know, uh, be a good opportunity for them to step in, you know, to maintain Celtics stay at the top of the season when Hayward gets back. You know, this is a team that can compete to win the, the entire uh, conference and put themselves in a position you know, to make a run at the uh, NBA championship. Yes, indeed. And so looking forward uh, those things to uh, occur going forward and, and first and foremost at the time being for Mr. Hayward uh, to get back healthy. Now, staying in the Atlantic Division, I got to check quick, you know, can't get too, you know what I mean? I, you know, beggars can't be choosing. And today I'm definitely, certainly a beggar, you know, coming in here late, you know, and, and on the charity, so I don't, I don't want to get too far. You know, we, we got a couple more topics that we can get to. Look, NBA, uh, it's been outstanding. The Lakers have been showing. Shout out to LeBron. You know, I, I, I you know, the man's a multi-national conglomerate. In terms of his business interests, well on his way to being a billionaire, and he gives back in uh, his community, the community. You know, he, he's generous and philanthropic. You know, uh, like a, a Bill Gates and a Warren Buffett. So we, we respect that. You know. Uh, thousand you know million percent okay uh but how he has responded to the critics myself among them after that dud first game of the year against the clippers uh the lakers for real uh the west for real that's already been noticed so i'm not going to go down that road again over in the eastern conference what's happening in uh what some say the greatest city in the world obviously it's debatable you know i, I tend to you know, coming from the tri-state area, being born in the great state of New Jersey, uh, I, I do love, you know, the big uh, and, and I, I do uh, appreciate, you know, history guy, you know, the, the, the Knicks, you know, and, and, and the tradition. Yes, 70, 73, those championships, right, that, that still means something to me. When we talk about, you know, uh, Clyde, uh, the Glide, you know, the first Clyde, the Glide, that's Frazier. When we talk about, you know, uh, uh, Earl the Pearl, you know, uh, Monroe, Coming from Philly, when we talk about Willis Reed, when we talk about David Bush, when we talk about Bill Bradley, Red Holzman as a coach, you know, that, that, that means something to me. Okay, when the Garden was Eden, outstanding 30 for 30. Okay, but the fact of the matter is, this Knicks organization, uh, James Dolan, and now uh, Steve Mills, what happened uh, yesterday and going into today, uh, and, and, and what it means, again, for this city. Financial, economic, that's the same thing. Financial, economic, the same thing. I thought that people. New York is a financial and political capital of the world. Wall Street, United Nations, as well as the media capital. Uh, you know, it, it, it is a, a center of so much. And, and the sports, they mean something. The Yankees, yes. The Giants, most of the Jets. Sorry to the Giants fans after that loss yesterday. And the Knicks. It means a tremendous amount. And for Steve Mills and this organization to conduct themselves how they have. Now, I know I'm coming to my conclusion, so we'll just power through. It, it's just egregious. Listen, the team is 2-8. and eight, Terrible start. There are systemic issues. There are. Now, systemic. Let me back off that. For some reason, uh, Fisdale, who's a good coach, David Fisdale, good coach. Pat Riley, Eric Spoles, tradition. He's not connecting with these young guys. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr., who is their future, has only played three games. He is uh, separated from the team for personal reasons. He's only playing uh, nine minutes a game. That's unacceptable. Kevin Knotts, also the future, playing less than 25 minutes a game, coming off the bench. Unacceptable. Top 10 pick here, guys. Mitchell Robinson, all right, their center of the future, playing less than 20 minutes a game. Fisdale, your rotation is garbage. 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 All right. That said, respect to 
his background and his ability. You know, he's not getting through to these young players. That is a significant problem, I believe, given time. And you know, he can get over that problem but by the Knicks organization going public in the number one media market in the country and, and possibly the world. And adding fuel to the flames that already exist with them being 2-8 and eight in the Eastern Conference. That is simply poor management, poor organizational strength, efficiency, whatever you want to call it. And starting off, you know, this show talking about the Baltimore Ravens and what can be done when you put two and two together. Now we are on the absolute other side of the spectrum with the New York Knicks. And it is shameful. We're a proud historic franchise to be conducting themselves like this, making rookie mistakes that a first-time fantasy owner would not make. There is no reason for them to go public this early in the season and with their checkered pass, which excludes them from getting top flight free agents like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. And Joey Kinnish said, they're standing film rounders. Listen, you know, this is one time I don't need you to tell me how I fucked up. I know I fucked up. What I need from you is money. I need whatever money you can give me. See, that's the thing. This time there is no money. I give you two grand, what's that buy you? A day? Nah, I give it to you, I'm wasting it. That's fucking great. You did it to yourself. You had to put it all on the line for some Vegas pipe dream. Hey, I took a risk, I took a risk. You, you see all the angles, you never have the fucking stones to play one. Stones? You little punk. I'm not playing for the thrill of fucking victory here. I will rent alimony, child support. I play for money. My kids eat. I got stones enough not to chase cards, actions, or fucking pipe dreams of winning the World Series on ESPN. You want me to call some people? Try and buy you some time, I will. Place to stay or the truck? No problem. But about the money, I gotta do this. I gotta say no. It's fine. I understand. You did it to yourself. They keep going on like this. NBA might need to step in, okay? NBA stepped in some years ago with Philadelphia and hired Jerry Colangelo, a basketball luminary, as a special consultant because of how that franchise, that historic and great franchise, was being run. And Jerry and Brian Colangelo, I don't care what happened with his Twitter account, set the foundation for this team that's a favorite to go to the NBA Finals. NBA might need to do the same thing with the New York Knicks. It's gotten to that point. All right? Happy Veterans Day. Respect to those who have served to create the freedoms and the life that we enjoy. <laughs> Folks, that's going to do it. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe as you feel the need. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for tuning in to Sand City Sports, and we will see you here back again the next time. Those do sedate ourselves Just in the mars pain we feel Yes, sometimes we do hate ourselves But each day we try to retake ourselves So yes, we peace of souls do sedate ourselves Just in the mars pain we feel Yes, sometimes we do hate ourselves But each day we try to embrace ourselves Yeah